All right, so I am going to talk to you guys today about what a model view controller is, okay? Uh, specifically, I'm going to be talking about the ASP.NET uh, MVC platform. And if you don't know what any of that stuff is, don't worry about it. I'm just uh, announcing that in case uh, you are a more experienced programmer who has dealt with uh, ASP.NET or .NET. So you kind of know what I'm doing here. So um, let's talk about what that means. Model view controller um, are, is actually three different parts. It should, it should really just be like model slash view slash controller or something like that because um, you're basically talking about um, dividing how you are structuring a website into three sections. So let's talk about what a model is. Um, first, uh, before you even model, before you even get to the model part, you kind of have to understand a little bit of the backstory. And uh, that would be first be a uh, database. So let, let me show you something real quick. So if you're going to make a program and it's going to do something like, showing bars around town and what beers they have. You're going to have basically two types of objects. You're going to have a bar and then you're going to have a beer. And the bar, as you can see here in Excel, or uh, LibreOffice Calc actually, um, so what, what, what are the things that bars have? They have a name, they have, um, I guess you could say a description, so like if you're going to describe a bar, you would say, you know, the, the owner or the manager of the bar could write in there, um, you know, a medieval themed bar that serves craft beer and tasty spirits or something like that. And then um, it's going to have an address, which actually is going to be um, split into a street number, street name and a city, and a state, and a country. So those are just really, really basic things that a bar can have, okay? Um, same with a beer. A beer is going to have a name. It's going to have a brewer. So whoever makes the beer, it's going to have a description. It could have a alcohol by volume, which is the amount of alcohol in it, and um, etc. So this is basically how a database is going to store information. So let's talk about exactly what a database is first, and kind of what's going on, and what we're talking well, This data sounds like it's like super crazy, like nerdy word or something. So let me show you. I'll I'll show you Scott Hanselman's blog. So this is just a blog, but you could use any website. And if you go on here, you can see that there is, you know, the page design, which is like the colors here and, um, you know, how the, the text, like how this Maria is yellow, how this text is a certain font. And then there's actually the content of the website, which is like, um, the information in here, especially like the actual blog post. So see how he's actually written articles here. Um, you know, he's got pictures in here. So the database is, the data itself is actually the content on this website. So if you were to actually remove the database from this, you would have an empty site with a design. It would just, but he'd have no, like, there wouldn't actually be a blog in here. It would just be a totally empty website. So that will show you kind of the basis, really a basics of almost all websites uh, is data. So in other words, you're not going to have a website without content. And the way the old sites used to, to display content is what they would do is they would just have pages. So for example, let me go to, um, actually I think I can show you, I have on here. 
an example. I'll show you. So this site here is like a little silly example site that I made uh, when I was reading an HTML book. And you can see here how uh, up here at the web address area, it is lounge.html. And then you can see here, if I click Elixir, it takes me to lounge slash beverages slash elixir.html. So what's going on here is this is an old school, old fashioned website. And this is how uh, most non-dynamic websites used to be made. Or like when the web first started, pretty much all websites were made like this. Like I remember seeing .html all the time, .htm, um, and other extensions up here. And this is called like a static web page. So what that means is that once this page is loaded, you, like you're not gonna you're not gonna really see anything. You're not gonna have anything dynamic loading after it's already been loaded. So like for example, if you go to Twitter dot com check this out when I scroll down it's going to continuously load stuff like this page is going to keep getting bigger and bigger as I scroll see how it just did that how it just jumped up the scroll bar and I and then I go down again and then now it gets bigger and bigger again so that is a dynamic uh, website feature something like what I was showing you where'd it go here we go. Um, like this page here, it can't do that. Like once you get to the bottom of the page, that's it. And if you want to go to another page, you can click a link and it will take you to another static page. So this is like totally different from how um, the model view controller works. And I'm going to explain that in a second. But what I needed to show you was that back in the, in the old days, or with like a static site like this, um, if you want to actually alter the content, you actually have to go into the HTML file itself. So back to the actual uh, folder for this website here. So if I want to change the main page here, like this page right here, let's say I want to like add some more text here. Well, I'm going to actually have to go to my folder and I'm going to have to go to lounge.html and I'm going to open it up with the editor. I use this Visual Studio code and see I actually have to go in here and um, change the, the words in here. So it's still data, but it's different because it's hard coded. It's, it's actually part of the static website file. Okay. It's not coming from a database. However, you could still run a nice website by doing this, but the difference is you just have to go in and constantly uh, open up HTML files, you know, put more information in there and then save them and then upload them to the server. So, I mean, you can still do that, but you can't do like really crazy, like super cool hip features like Facebook and Twitter do by doing that. Like you can't make things update all fast and everything. And it doesn't really work that way. But if you're just trying to make like a basic portfolio site or something, or a really basic web page about yourself or your business, then you really don't need to use something like model view controller or like a single, a, a single page website and all that kind of stuff. So now that I've talked about that, let me go back here. So if we're going to actually have a database, uh, a database is going to look something, it can be visualized like uh, this spreadsheet. You know, you're going to have tables and then within those tables, you're going to have um, columns. And actually, in this case here, I'm actually listing these. These are actually going to be the columns. So actually, within the database itself, you're going to see something like this. It's going to be like name here. And you're going to have like, um, you know, brewer here. And then what's going to happen is you're going to have all your data. So you're going to have like different, different rows. So like, let's say this is all the beer. This is just the beer section of the database. Well, you're going to have something like this. Stella. Heineken. And Corona. 
And so this this whole thing here would be called the beer's table, basically. This whole uh, arrangement. Obviously, you'd have name, you'd have brewer, you'd have description, etc. So basically, when your program needs to interact with the database, it needs to use what we call a model. And if you're wondering what a model is, this is actually a model. Like, and I'll show you like how my database actually looks. There's not much data in it, but I can show you how the database management software will actually uh, model the database. I'm launching it right now. All these windows open. So I'm logging in here and I'm going to go to my database that the happy hour development database right here. Okay, so my list of bars. Let's actually pull this up. So in my bars um, table, I have name, Google Place ID, the discounts for every single day of the week, the time it was last updated, and then the bars ID. So this is actually, this is a visualization or a model of the data being stored in the database. Now, the database itself doesn't actually store data like this. Like, this is a visualization to help a human understand. It. But basically, it just, it's just, like, all jammed together in one big, long, like, string of numbers because computers eventually, you know, convert everything to, like, ones and O's and stuff like that. So, um, so actually, when you're looking at a database like this, um, that's actually a model. And... Um, Basically, you need to, when you're programming, so let's say you're making a website and you have an actual uh, spot here for blog entry text, which is going to be a gigantic, um, you know, text box, basically. You actually need to save that into uh, a database column, just like anything else, just like all this information that you see in this database here. So. When you save that in the column, then it is going to be assigned with uh, whatever other piece of data. Like, for example, the, if the blog post has a name, it's going to be in the name column. Then the content is going to be in the content column. And then the uh, blog post ID is going to be in the ID column. So now you can actually interact with this. So when you're programming your website, if you want to display your uh, blog post, you're going to say, like, pull this blog post by ID or by title, and then you're actually going to display that on the website. So in order for your program to interact with the data like that, you need to use a model, it's called. So now I'm going to actually show you some code here. And uh, this is actually Microsoft Visual Studio, in case you were wondering. It's just a, it's basically just a code editor um, that does a whole bunch of cool stuff. But so I will show you here. So in my, my bar controller here, I am actually, when you go to my website, which is actually just on my computer, if you go to list the bar. So if you go to slash bar, it will pull up the index page. And you can see here how there's a list of bars. There's Buffalo Wild Wings, Johnson's, and Rookie's Sports Bar. And it gives me the option to edit these. And see, if you look closely, when I'm hovering over the edit spot here, if you look at the bottom corner of the screen, um, you can see how it says localhost slash bar slash edit slash one. Well, what that's doing is it is sending the bar ID over into this uh, edit action right here. And that is actually doing something. It's executing some code. So the index itself, which is just this list here that you see, the way this is working is it's using this, how it says bars equals context.bars.toList. What that's doing is it's actually pulling from the database. It's saying, get the bars in this bars table right here, list them, and then display that. That's what that's doing right there. 
Now, as you can see here, it says contact.bar. Well, what that is, is that is actually, it's, it's interacting with my model. And my model here, if you go to where it says bar.cs, it's nothing but uh, a C-sharp file. And it just has a class with the title of the table name inside of the, the database. So if you go to the database here, you see this name, Google Place ID, Sunday discounts, Monday discounts, Tuesday discounts. If you go back to the, to the bar class, you can see here all the same stuff. Name, Google Place ID, Sunday discounts, Monday discounts, Tuesday discounts. So this right here is the model. This is the model for the bar class. This is the model for the bar table. And that's what the model is in Model View Controller. It is, it is basically programmatically hooking up to the database with C-sharp code. And then that allows my program to then interact with the database by interacting with this C-sharp code. So instead of going and trying to query the database um, manually by like running like SQL and stuff like that on it, um, which if I were to do that, I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean by that. Like, let's pull up a notepad. If I were to do like, I, I could do something like this, SQL, Select all from bars where name equals John or something like that. See, that would be me having to like actually run SQL on a database like manually. And this doesn't really allow you to be very flexible um, when it comes to programming because I'm having to actually include this in the, in the double quotes here, which means that I can't interact the same way with this data and the database and stuff as I could if, for example, I'm actually interacting with the model. So if you go back to my bar controller here, I'll give you an example. So I'll give you an example right here. So this bar in DB, if you, if you look at this code right here, what I'm doing is I'm going to the database because this context is basically representing the database. That's it. So it's saying database, bars table, and then ignore this for now. This is a little bit more advanced. And then it's saying select the, a bar in the database where the bar equals the, or the bar ID number equals the given bar ID number here, which actually comes from this right here. So um, don't get confused by this, but basically all this is saying is given a certain bar ID, pull it out of the database and put it inside of this bar in DB variable, okay? Now what that does is it allows me to type bar in DB dot and see, this actually gives me access. It gives me direct access to every single one of those um, rows, or columns, I mean, in the database. So every single one of those properties that we associate with a bar, like the bar name, bar ID, bars, beers, variety discounts, it allows me direct access to that. So I could actually do something like this. I could actually say bar and DB, variety discounts equals none. Sorry. And this code right here, when this code block gets executed, it will actually manually, it will, it will write none sorry in whatever bar we have selected for the Friday discount. It will actually put that into the database. Because down here it says context save changes. That means whatever we did up here, enter it into the database. That's what that's saying. Because once again, this, this context, it actually represents the database itself. So what I'm trying to show you here is that these models in the model view controller, it allows our program to interact with the database. And it allows it to do it, it allows us to do it in a nice and convenient way that gives us like access to all of these uh, different properties 
and um, attributes in the database tables and all that. I mean, it gets a little bit more advanced, um, you know, and eventually when you start getting into this stuff, you're going to have to learn more about databases and how they're designed, uh, specifically relational databases. And um, you're also going to have to learn about SQL, which is the language used to uh, query the database. In fact, I can show you that real quick, too. I'm gonna sh I'll give you a really quick example here. Um, I'll write a little query. Basically, I'll just say, like, using, or, sorry, use happy hour development. Go. So that basically just tells uh, the database that we are using this data because I have a bunch of databases, and um, this is the database that we're going to be working with. So that way it knows what we're going to do here. So I can say select all from addresses. And hit execute. So what that does is it goes into the address table and it just shows us everything that's in the table. So you can see here that um, bar ID one, this is the address, 888 whatever road and null city. And then bar ID two, the address for bar ID number two is uh, 555 silly way, some city, no state. Um, this is just dummy data basically, which is just for an example purpose, but that's what SQL does. It allows you to do things with the database, and it gets a lot more advanced than that, but I just wanted to show you something real basic. Okay, so that's really what models are, and um, I'll show you a practical use of a model here. Um, this is a form. This is actually the bar form, so let me show you the bar form. Uh, let me get rid of this. So when I hit edit on Buffalo Wild Wings, this is the bar form right here, okay? And I designed this form here so that I can enter this, all this information when I want to add a new bar to my application here. You can see the address, Friday specials and happy hour, all that crap. So this is the code for that form. And in here, see, I reference the model. I reference the model. And what that does is that allows us to pull this data and put it into our form. So I'm saying model.bar.name. So whenever I, whenever this form is loaded, it's past a certain bar. And when it hits these uh, pieces of information here, these variables, it's going to display information for that bar. So it, you know, it's going to say the bar's name is going to go here. The Google Place ID is going to go here. The discounts are going to go here, and etc. So this is actually how a model is used. Now, this thing itself, this this form here, is actually called a view. That's what the view is in in Model View Controller, and all that is is that's actually the visual. That's the thing that you are. Um, that's the page that gets sent to the browser. Um, that's actually the HTML, and um, I mean, as you can see here, it allows us to to basically dynamically display using uh, C sharp programming, or in some cases like JavaScript. We can actually uh, change what the user is seeing on the fly. See, unlike a a regular HTML page like this, I can't change anything like that. It's just it's all hard coded. But here it's like, I'll show you, this page is actually going to change depending on what I do. So, like, let's say I want to call this, like, Joe's Crab Shack. And I hit save. Check this out. See, now this page has changed. And Joe's Crab Shack's in here. Because what happened was, is when the, uh, the bar form ran, it said, okay, or actually when, uh, yeah, so when the bar form ran, I entered in data here, and then I hit save, and it, it ran my save action, which then went to the, uh, let me pull up.
pull up the bar view, the regular bar index view. It then went here, and in here, you can see that for each item, so basically for every single bar, it's going to list it on the page. That's what this is saying. So for every item in model, which in this case is every bar in bars, then it's going to write this HTML code into the browser and display it for the user. So what happened here is because I changed the name, this item.name for that database entry was, was changed. It was no longer Buffalo Wild Wings. Instead, it was Joe's Crab Shack. So that's what they mean by being able to dynamically um, create pages. It's different. It's a lot different from a static HTML page. Now, let's get to the controller part. Um, that's a really basic view, by the way. You can actually add like a lot more HTML in here. You can, you know, you can add JavaScript. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, but that's just the real basics of this. So let me talk more about the controller. So as you can see on these kind of pages, I'm sure you've seen this before. Um, see how it says like localhost slash bar. Well, let's say I want to edit like Joe's Crab Shack. Well, if I click edit here. It says localhost slash bar slash edit slash one. Well, one is the ID number of Joe's Crab Shack. So in other words, this, this was the first bar that was ever created. And I guess Joe's Crab Shack is kind of just a restaurant anyway. But anyway, um, this is the first uh, bar listing here. So that's why the ID number is one. So what it's doing here is instead of like on this static page where going to the URL up here actually navigates to a page, to an actual document, it's not really doing that. Instead, what's going on here is it's, it's navigating to a, to a C-sharp function. <laughs> so if you go into my bar control, or my bar controller here, right here, look at these names of these functions here. Index, details, edit, what's actually happening is it is going slash bar, and that refers to the controller. So if you go back here, you can see this is called bar controller. So when I say slash bar, it is calling up this bar controller right here. And then it's saying, go inside that bar controller and run the edit function. It's also called an action or a method. There's three freaking words for the same thing, basically. But it's basically, it's running this edit function. So it goes, okay, bar controller, where is the edit function at? All right, here it is. Now, when it says slash one, it's running that as an argument to the function or, or a parameter. So see how it says edit and then int ID? That one is going in here. So basically what it's doing is it's using the URL to run a function on the server. And it can, you can even pass arguments to that function, which is exactly what this is doing. That's why like, you don't see like a slash one dot HTML, because it's not actually running a web page. Instead, it is hitting up this, this bar controller, and it's saying, run the edit function, give it ID one. And then from within that function, that's where we tell uh, the website what to do. That's how, that's, you know, from, from there is how we display stuff. So then from within the function, it's saying, okay, get this bar ID number, check it, see if it even exists. If it doesn't exist, it's going to run, it's going to basically give you an error message. So I'll give you an example of this. Like, for example, there's no bar 104 right now. So if I do edit 104, check this out. Boom. See? So this controller is dynamically displaying uh, a different page depending on this, what this function is telling it to do. What this, they call this programming logic. What, what this logic that we've basically uh, told our program 
what to do, depending on what we put in here, it's going to show something different to the user. And this is like, this opens up a whole new like window or door, I guess I should say, of what you can do. Now it's starting to make sense as to how uh, programmers and web developers can actually make like a login system. Because basically, a simplified version of this would be to say, hey, you know, if this person is logged in under this account, then display a page like this. And if they're not logged in under this account, then display the page like that. So that's why we can see pages where, like, if you're not logged in, for example, my Twitter, I'm logged in, you know? But if I were to go to, like, freaking uh, Tumblr or something, which I don't have, I'm not logged in. So, see, that's why it says log in or sign up, because it's it's gone in here, and it's hit the uh, it's hit a function, and that function has determined that I'm not logged in, and therefore is is showing me a different page than somebody who was logged in would see. That's like one application of this uh, type of thing. So let me go back to, or actually, I don't even need my Twitter anymore. Uh, let me go back to where I was here. So let's go back to this. Now, so as you can see here, what's going on is if I want to edit a bar, let's say I want to edit a bar that actually exists, like this Joe's Crab Shack, like bar slash edit slash one. So it's now put one in here. This says, hey, database, select the bar with ID number one, which in this case would be Joe's Crab Shack. Store it in bar. If it doesn't exist, give it error. Yeah, and then this is actually checking the address, but we'll skip over that for now. And then what we're doing here is, um, this is also a little bit more complicated too. I'll get to that later or in the next video. But basically what we're doing now is we're saying display the bar form with the data from bar with ID number one. Okay. And then that's how we get this view. This is the bar form. And now we've essentially passed the bar from the database with ID number one. So I'll show you real quick here. Select all the rows. So bar with ID one is Joe's Crab Shack. This is the Google Place ID number for that place. And then um, these are you know other pieces of information about, which it just happens to be null because I haven't populated any of this yet. But, um, and then the last updated time right here. So that is now being pulled out of the database and is being displayed in the bar form in this view right here. So now you've seen how model view controller actually works because um, you've seen how a model, um, go back to Visual Studio here. So you've seen how a model models the database uh, properties and fields and everything. So this is, this is literally a model of the actual database for the bar uh, table. And you've seen how the controller, um, when you go to a student, certain URL or address in the, you know, um, on the internet, it will actually run a different function. And then that function will pull information out of the database via the model. <laughs> and then it will actually send it right here, let me show you, to a view. So it's saying, hey, get this bar out of the database, and then now pull up the bar form view with the information from the database for the bar with the ID number given up here that we entered into the, to the uh, address of the website. That then goes to the uh, bar form and this is like your actual HTML code and the code that's used to actually uh, render or display the web page. Now, you might see all these apps and stuff here. What this basically does is this allows you to write C Sharp programming code into the page to dynamically display the, the web page. So, you know, in contrast to a plain HTML page, 
like I showed you earlier, or like I'll, I'll give you another example here. Like if I just go to View Source, yeah. If you go, if you ever want to look at the HTML on a website, just right click it, click View Page Source. So this is the actual HTML that is is seen by the browser. So your browser sees this this code right here, and that tells it where to put everything on the page. So this is the end product of what we're doing here. Here, we're actually using C sharp code to actually write this HTML code. There are actually functions in C sharp in ASP.NET MVC that allow you to uh, write HTML code, but do it in a format where you can dynamically create web pages. Um, so that way, for example, we don't have to keep, like let's say we have 200 bars. We don't have to make 200 pages. What will happen is, is that um, we'll just tell the program, like we've done here, like when I go back to just regular bar list, see the, the, uh, the program creates the pages for us because we've told it for every single item in the bar table in the database, make a new listing, and then for every single listing, display the edit view when you click on edit. So you've only had to make two pages. All you've had to make is a bar form and an index page rather than having to go and make, okay, uh, uh, edit page for Joe's Crab Shack, and edit page for Johnson's, and edit page for Rookies, and however many bars you have listed. Okay, so that really is the beauty of uh, dynamic web pages, like uh, you know what what can be used in ASP.NET using C Sharp. Um, you can also do this with JavaScript and something called uh, Node.js. You can even do this with something called Angular, um, which is more of a front end. I'm actually this is actually a back end architecture. So what that means is that this code is executed on the server itself. It's not executed on the uh, person, the end user's computer. So if you go to my site, if you go to my website here, and you're not me, basically, if you're not the developer, you just pull up this website here, all the code that I wrote that I just showed you is happening on the web server's end. It's not happening on the client's end. Um, it's just, it's basically like if you go to view source here, all this, all this here is just getting sent to my computer from the server. The server is figuring out the rest. So this MVC thing is actually a uh, server architecture, it's called. And basically what that means is just that all this stuff is being done on the server side rather than the client side. So I've shown you how a controller works. I've shown you what a model is, and I've shown you uh, how the information is displayed in a view as well. And you can see here in the view, you can actually add your own HTML, you can add CSS, you can do all kinds of stuff. And that's kind of outside the scope of this video. But I wanted to explain in simple terms what MVC is. Um, and this is obviously ASP.NET MVC, which is Microsoft's version of the MVC sort of platform or uh, framework, if you will. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave me some comments, and uh, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. All right, thank you for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more ASP.NET videos.